Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're showing you how to clean silver and silver plated items. We'll even show you how to save a seemingly ruined lacquer silver piece. So let's remove that ugly tarnish. I'm going to attempt to clean some of this silver plate. Also got this sort of cheese knife here. Got a tray. This is part of another set that I'm gonna to have to do in pieces. And what I've done is I've lined a tray with some tin foil. I've got the kettle boiling because we're gonna need some hot water. I'm using equal parts of Calgon and also some salt. I'm gonna sprinkle it in this tray and then pour the water over and then make sure that the pieces are totally submerged in the water. So let's get going. So now I've got equal parts of salt and cal gone at the bottom of the tray and we're gonna dissolve it with some hot water. So I'm just gonna pour it into the tray. Let that dissolve. Now you wanna be sure that your items are gonna be fully submerged. Okay, now I didn't boil it so it's not hot, hot. So let's just see what happens. First one's going in. Looks like the knife is coming up well, but this uh, item here is silver plated and I'm not sure if it's going to untarnish for me. Okay, let's come back in a few minutes. A couple minutes later, and from what I can see, it's doing a great job on this sterling piece. There's still a bit of tarnish in the uh, details here. So I'll just continue to sort of turn and let it hit the foil. But this one isn't coming up too well. It is lifting some of the tarnish, but it's by no means clean. So I'll probably have to take some polish to that. And this is a silver plate on copper. So here's how the knife is looking after rinsing and drawing with a microfiber cloth. It's looking pretty beautiful, I have to say. So I might just take a little bit of polish just to get into some of the finer details that are still tarnished, like right there. But as for the other piece, it's still not looking that great. I can see that some of the tarnish is lifted. We'll just go over and take a look at that. Let's just see the other side here. Well, it's a little bit better, but I mean, not anywhere near what the knife is. The silver plate isn't really doing much in this solution, so I'm gonna take it out, rinse it, and probably use a little bit of silvo polish. Hopefully that will bring it back. I've actually changed my mind, guys. I can actually hear it still bubbling, so there must still be some kind of a chemical reaction going on. So I think I'm just gonna leave this. Um, I'm gonna come back in 20 minutes and see if that makes any difference at all. I used the method I just showed you to try to get this clean and it just didn't really lift it. Again, it's a silver plated item. So I'm using silvo polish here. As you can see, it really is bringing up the tarnish. So I think I'm just gonna have to put in some elbow grease to get this sparkling. I just wanna show you how the foil is looking after the water is drained. So you can see that the chemical reaction took place and the foil is sort of darker here. That's where it attracts the, the tarnish to the foil, as opposed to how we started with just a shiny surface here. You can see that it really does tend to attract it and work. But um, as you saw, it doesn't work all that great on plated silver. Um, this is also a plated silver piece with a lot of tarnish. So for this one, I'm not gonna do the dip method um, using the Calgon. I'm gonna try something else. And that's how it's looking to start. So let's get set up and I'll show you how I'm doing this one. Here's the silver plated item after cleaning in the solution and it's a little better but by no means is it shiny and beautiful so we're gonna give the silvo a try okay so as you can see I've got 
the silver metal polish on here. That's what I'm using. And look, it's actually lifting it off. I don't know if it'll come up as clean as I'd like it, but I'm just gonna keep going. So far, so good. It's pretty tarnished. So let's just give this another shot. Just keep dipping in fresh as your cloth becomes black. Let's try here. So I do think the chemical reaction did help because it did lift some of the surface tarnish and I mean, as you can see it's still pretty black but I suspect that it makes it easier. It's looking pretty good. Better than I expected. Scrub the um, the fine work on there with maybe a toothbrush. Soft no, toothbrush. I think that would probably scratch it. So mm -hmm. I'm not even going to attempt that. You know, I don't mind leaving some of the tarnish in the detail because otherwise you don't really see it that well. But I mean, I am going to go at it and get it as clean as I possibly can. So that's pretty good. Um, now I am going to continue to clean this, but once you are satisfied, you're just going to take a clean cloth and then buff off the polish. And as you can see, that brings up the shine right here. It's quite nice actually. And it'll take off remaining tarnish that's left. So I'm going to continue working on the center and um, I'll show you when I'm done. Silver plated item that we put into the solution of Calgon and salt did come up really nicely with um, the Silvo polish. Still does have like a few scratches on but much better than it was. No longer tarnished. Although there is still a little bit of tarnish in the crevices here. For the cream and sugar set that I'm doing right now, um, the inside is quite dirty so I'm having to get in there with a q-tip into all the recesses. Just have to swirl it around, do my best. It looks like uh, some of the copper's um, already coming through so likely the silver is coming off of the plate. Another way to determine uh, whether you have silver or silver plate is to see if there's any flaking on the piece that exposes the base metal. And I think it's more apparent on the tip here that we do have some exposure. I don't know for sure, so when I take my cleaning solution to this, we'll see if it's just tarnish or if it's actually base metal. This might be a piece that we can't save. Um, on the inside, I don't think the camera will pick this up, but it does say Viking plate. So always look for the mark and that can help you determine too. So on this piece, um, I am not going to use um, Calgon because if this is um, chipping on the silver, it'll just make it worse. What I'm going to be using on this piece are these Wyman silver wipes and they're actually recommended for silver plate. But since this is such a small piece and I just want to give it a try, what I'm going to do is just take one out and oh actually I've already cut this piece so I was just going to suggest that when you're working with a smaller piece, actually I'll just cut a little bit of this off because I don't need the whole thing. Just take some scissors to it, put it back in there, close the lid tightly so it doesn't dry out. And that way you're not wasting it. So let's just try this on the tip and see whether it's actually exposing the base metal or whether it's just tarnish. Let's give this piece a wipe over here. As you can see, that was totally black, and you can see the silver coming through. 
Now this is kind of weird because it almost looks like it's gold. It's got this yellowish tone so I'm assuming this whole thing is kind of just tarnished and will expose more of a cool silver color once it's totally clean. Kind of like it the way it looked but I mean I couldn't leave it with this big black blob of tarnish on there. Now the thing I love about these Wyman cloths is that it doesn't leave my hands filthy like other polishes do. This really is, I believe, just a little more gentler than other things I've been using. I've also tried the Silvo polish and I'll show you in a moment what that looks like. Okay. So it is looking silver underneath. Maybe it is the base metal showing through. Hard to say whether that's silver or base metal, but let's see what happens when I polish over some of this gold tone here. I'm just gonna continue getting the black off and we'll just see what we end up with. This uh, silver polishing really isn't for the faint of heart. It does take a lot of time. It's time consuming. Takes a little bit of elbow grease. So that black mark is lifting really well. What I especially love about the Wyman's wipes is the thin liquid consistency. It really allows you to get into some of these crevices. I find with some of the thicker liquids, like they just don't get in there. See? It really allows you to really dig in there and get the product where it needs to be. And this cloth is so nice and thin. I find that even using um, some of the liquid silver polishes with t-shirt fabric is just a little bit too thick to get in there. But these are really nice and thin and they're strong too. Like I've never had one tear on me. Some tarnish is just a lot more stubborn than others, and it could very well be that maybe it is flaking off and exposing some metal in some spots. So if you're just rubbing tirelessly and nothing's really coming clean, then likely you've got flaking on your metal plate. And really the only thing you can do in that instance is just have it replated. And I'm sure it's quite costly to do that, but I mean, if there are pieces that have been in your family for generations that have sentimental value, you might consider doing that. So once I'm done with this here, I'm not gonna show you this part, but I'm gonna take it to the sink and it suggests that you rinse off um, whatever film is left on there, and then you just wipe it dry with a soft cloth. So that's where the t-shirt fabric will come in handy. I'll just wipe it dry with some cotton fabric and buff it up to a shine. I mean, that's looking pretty much done. So I'm not sure if that's gonna polish up. I'm just gonna get my t-shirt fabric and see if that does polish out. It's hard to say whether I've ruined whatever this brassy plate is or if that's just like residue. So let's just see if it polishes out. And the answer is no. So I'm gonna grab another piece of this cloth here, this Wyman's. Just gonna grab another little piece. And let's just see what happens. It's a little bit strange because if it is a brass plating, um, the label does say that it can be used on brass. Excellent for gold, brass, copper, and aluminum. Sorry I'm out of focus here, guys. Can't get that to focus, but it does say that it's okay for those other metals. My theory is that um, this piece was lacquered, and so that clouding you see is probably the lacquer coming off. So I don't know that this can be saved, but I mean, 
I wasn't going to use it with that big black, black spot there anyways. I think the best that I could do is find a way to get this um, kind of brassy coating off completely and just re-expose the silver again. As you just saw, I had no luck cleaning this piece because unfortunately it had a lacquer finish and as you can see it's all cloudy now. And so we're going to set that aside. And I do have another little piece. I had two of these and the first one that I did turned out really awesome. Of course I didn't tape that segment. So I'm going to show you how well this product works on silver plate where there's no lacquer. Grab another one of these and again because I don't want it to dry out on me I'm just going to cut this in half, tuck the rest inside, close it up and I'll just use half at a time. And that's just to prevent it from drying out. And as I mentioned before, I really like that this can really get in these crevices. Now you can already see a big difference between the tarnished areas and where I've been rubbing and you can see that the tarnish is coming right off onto the cloth. I just want to point out then that um, where you can't really see the markings because it's so tarnished and you can't really tell what it is, another good indication that you've got a plated piece is this sort of green coloration here. So let's just see if this comes off or if we're like worn right through. Hard to say at this point whether that's going to polish up, but I'm just going to continue rubbing away and let's just get a clean area here going. Okay, so it does appear to be coming off. It does need a lot of elbow grease though. Let's just try some of these detailed areas too. As you can see, it takes quite a lot of rubbing. It's going to take probably many more cloths to get this really clean and sparkling. So that's that one. I'm going to continue this off camera and we'll see how far we get with the wipes. Now I do have another product. I'm just going to grab it here. This is Silvo and it's more of a polish that's um, rather thick and pasty. So what you want to do is shake it up really well. I'm just going to get a piece of cotton. I've got a piece of t-shirt cloth here. Just going to fold it over. That's already shaken. I'm going to open this up. As you can see, it's a paste-like consistency. It's pretty thick. Make sure you cover that up so it can't evaporate. Let's just see how this does. Just try an area right beside here. So that too is coming off, but it just really leaves a mess. For some reason I find that the cloths aren't as messy. I don't know, I just find it captures the tarnish better and it doesn't leave my hands black. Whereas if I were to continue this, I would just be covered. I was trying this the other day and I had to actually use some of my husband's um, special hand cleaner to get tough messes off and I find for some reason with these wipes um, that's not really a problem it's just like soap and water cleanup okay as you can see using this I still have tons of black here whereas using the polishing cloth I think because it's more of a thin consistency and liquidy it just gets into the details better for some reason 
Let's just move over to the side here. And just try another area. I don't know, I just feel like these wipes are doing a far better job of getting into the detail. Now, I don't know, it could be the thickness of the fabric or the consistency of the product itself, but it just doesn't seem to really budge all of the crud that's in between. Whereas this is kind of like seeping in. And you can see it's just seeping right onto that as you squeeze it. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there and just point out that that looks far better than the same amount of effort over here with the Silvo Polish. I hope you can see that. But it just seems to be a lot blacker. It doesn't really um, get the tarnish out of the detail as well. So I'm going to continue with a polishing cloth. I'm going to do this off camera only because it's just far easier not to have a camera in front of me when I'm doing this. So I'm still working away at this clamshell with uh, the wipe. And I just want to show you the comparison. A little bit of rubbing really brings it up. You can still see the tarnish here. Still a lot more work needed. Looks to me like this might be a foodborne stain here, so it might not come off with the polish, but we'll see what we can do to get that off. Let's just try some of this in some of the more tarnished areas here. It's just lifting the black right off. Just going to open this up. Try to get into some of these details. As you can see, the cloth is still removing tarnish. It's really black, but it's still going strong. And as I showed you before, this really does tend to get right into those details and lift the tarnish out. Whereas I'm not finding that the polish is working in the same way. Just when you think the cloth is so dirty that it can't possibly clean any more tarnish, I'm still going strong with this little bit. As opposed to here where I use the cream cleaner, I mean you just keep having to go back to the bottle to get fresh because it dries so quickly. It's just amazing to see that black reveal this shiny sparkly silver right before your very eyes and I'm sure I'll need a fresh one to finish the inside and that's where we're at I finally retired that first piece of wipe I started with and now I'm going back for another piece and you know the best thing about the wipe is that all sides of this fabric are impregnated with the solution. So you can go around the outside and you've got it underneath and above and you're cutting down your work. So as I'm doing this I'm also getting the back as you can see there. So it's a bit of a time saver that way. This one is quite a bit worse than the first one I did. Unfortunately I did not film that one that went a lot faster. This one is gonna be a lot more challenging than that. Really get into the area where the hinges are. That really tends to tarnish very badly. As I mentioned, when you're finally done and you can no longer get any more tarnish off and it's all cleaned up and polished, that's the time to let it dry and just give it a rinse and then buff it with a soft cloth. And you don't want to leave any water on your silver because that will leave watermarks and it can also um, start the tarnish process all over again. So water is not a friend of silver. 
Okay, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to cut to a picture of how the first one came out. It really does look gorgeous in comparison to how they started. So this did come up really nicely in most spots, but unfortunately it looks like near the hinge here, it's worn right through to the brass. And on the inside, there's also indications that it's worn through to the brass. But as you can see, it does tackle a lot of the tarnish. Now I didn't bother getting into these crevices here only because the plating is worn through. So I'm gonna set that aside. We have this other little piece and um, this is one of the parts that goes with that lid that we saw earlier that turned out to be um, lacquered. So I'm just curious to know if this tarnish is going to come off. So let's just grab another piece. And let's just give this a rub and see what happens. Okay, so it does appear to be lifting. But again, I don't know if there are places where it's worn through to the plate. So I guess all I can advise you is to put in the effort. A lot of this requires quite a bit of elbow grease. So that's a first pass. Let me just get a clean spot on the cloth here. And that's coming up much brighter. You can see the comparison here versus where I haven't cleaned. And that's also coming up nicely. So as you can see, it just takes a lot of elbow grease, um, time, effort, and you can just bring it up to a beautiful silvery shine again. Now what I would recommend doing is um, using it for holidays like Christmas, where you've got a beautifully set table, you can enjoy it with family and friends, but then when Christmas is over and you're not likely going to be using it again for any special occasion anytime soon, just wrap it up in plastic so that um, you can save all the hard work. Now this has a glass dish that goes in the center and you saw the cover so it gets covered. So the interior actually doesn't have a lot of tarnish because the air wasn't able to reach it. It's just these outer portions here. And my feeling about anything that has relief, like this sort of rope edge here, is just to bring up some of the silver, but leave some of the tarnish in the details so that you have contrast. That gives it an antique finish. Now, of course, if you want it total clean, you're just gonna have to go at it and keep scrubbing, but I just think a little bit of tarnish in some of these details looks lovely because you really can appreciate the low lights and the highlights if you do leave some of it. And that's looking really pretty. The back of this piece is looking like an oil slick. It's really dark, lots of colors in there, but it is coming up. So it's just a matter of rubbing it all over There's a comparison where I cleaned and where it's still really black. Just rub in circular motions. You can see why I suggest when you're not using these pieces just to wrap them in plastic because it takes a lot of effort to get them clean again once they're tarnished. And tarnishing happens fairly quickly too, you'd be surprised. It's just the exposure to the air and it just um, has a chemical reaction with the sulfur and it just picks up that black tinge. I actually think the black is kind of pretty. Like you can see greens and reds and all sorts of colors in there. But that's just me. I think 99% 
of the population would prefer to see the sparkly silver. So that's coming up pretty well. It's going to take a few claws to get through all this tarnish. So even if I can't use the lid because it was lacquered and kind of in a bad state of repair right now, um, you can still use this without the lid, have the glass dish in there. It's still a pretty piece. I don't recall if I mentioned this, but the other option is to have some of these pieces re-silver plated if they have worn through to the base metal. And then you can just completely rejuvenate it. Now, of course, that is going to be costly. I don't know what the cost is. Um, I do recall years ago, I think my sister had some, um, like a tea set, a silver plated tea set redone. I'll have to ask her and uh, if I get an answer, I'll um, put that on the blog. Earlier today, I tried to clean the tarnish that was on this beautiful lid and it had this sort of nice golden brassy color. But I think what happened was um, it was lacquered and so now it's just left with this cloudy residue with this beautiful piece where the tarnish was previously. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it into our ultrasonic cleaner to see if we can remove the lacquer and then um, maybe we can even get it down to the silver that's underneath. Yeah. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to, before we turn the ultrasonic on, we want to add, we're going to use hot water, so we're going to put the hottest water we can in there. We're just going to start with a bit of water. You have to put everything in a basket in an ultrasonic so nothing hits the sides of the ultrasonic. We put some of the water in, we're going to then plug it in, and we're going to turn on the heater, and we're going to set, it's at 44 now, we're going to set the temperature a little higher. Um, it'll still work at the lower temperature, I'm just putting it up so it'll slowly heat up a little bit more. Um, we have the timer set for five minutes. And then, instead of putting any kind of cleaning liquid into here, and getting this whole um, ultrasonic dirty, we're simply going to put our piece in a plastic bag. We're using Simply, H, Simply Green Pro HD, which is safe to use on metals. We mixed it one to one. Usually one to one if it's really, really dirty. Uh, this one didn't need it that strong, but we had it mixed already. So we're going to add that in. Now, we kind of want to try and get it covered in this liquid, so I'm going to add a bit more water. I think what we want is like face down. Yeah, and then and it's in contact. Yeah. So this is why I didn't put too much water in here. We're adding a lot more water. Let's hopefully that. Let's see what happens. So if we take this, we squeeze the air out of it. You don't even have to close the lid if you don't want. Like it won't shoot out. We're gonna put it in here. See if we can get it submerged in the water. Okay, so it's below the lid of this, but it needs a little more water. In Cleaner covers it. We're going to do that. And then we're going to add some more water to the ultrasonic. You can fill it almost to the top. You don't even have to put the lid on. It's not necessary if you don't want to. You can put it on. Now we're going to set the timer for five minutes. So five minutes is up. Let's see if it made any difference whatsoever. I'm going to take this over the sink. If it looks like it helped, we could always do another five minutes. So, I'm going to try and save this liquid if I can. Wow, look at that. Wow, oh, it's just peeling right off. Okay, I need a container to put this in. Can you grab me that big container over there? I'm just going to set this in here so we can reuse that. So it's pretty clean. I think this is going to rinse right yeah. off with water. Let's see. Well, look at that. Yeah. It's the lacquer coming off. Peeling right off. Wow. So we're going to rinse this under hot water, see how much comes we off. We saved it, it. If it needs another, and look at we don't even have to scrub it or anything. If it needs another, look at that. Wash, uh, run through the. Yeah. Be machine. careful that you don't scratch the silver. Nope. I'm just using my fingertips. So look at that. Wow, it's saved. 
just loosened all this lacquer off. That's the problem with an ultrasonic too, is if you put a part in that's painted, it can sometimes take all your paint off. Look at that. I'm just rubbing it with my fingers. And this was probably polished before they put the lacquer on, so look at that. Wow. Beautiful. Stunning. I can't believe we saved this piece. I thought it was ruined. Yeah. You may need a soft little brush to get into here. I can't get my fingers in there. Yeah. Although it looks maybe like it's a little tarnished. Anyways. Hmm. Beautiful. Pretty nice, eh? Yeah. yeah. You can see how clean this liquid is. We can use that again. We'll yeah. put it back into our container and uh, clean more parts with it. Wow, that is awesome. Isn't that great? Cool. I'm going to dry this off and just touch it up. Don't forget to subscribe to Birds of a Feather and hit that bell if you want to be notified of our next DIY.